Good morning. Good morning, and welcome to St. David's United Church. This is, we are happy to welcome you all back this morning. You've probably noticed that something fishy is going on here. As is our Baptist Church theme this year is going to be fishing for the future, and you're going to be hearing more about that as we go along. But first, we have some announcements. Um, Christopher, if you'd like to start us off. First up, next weekend on Friday, nope, on Saturday and Sunday from 9 until 1 is our annual fall bottle drive. So if you've been collecting some bottles over the summer, maybe you've had company, maybe you've been at the cottage, but there's likely some bottles hanging around. Uh, we'd invite you to bring those and uh, bring them here and help us to raise funds to support the Ministry of St. David's. If you have bottles and aren't able to come next Saturday or next Sunday, Call my office. We will arrange to either come and pick them up from you, or you can come and drop them off at the shed at the back of the driveway, at the back of the parking lot, anytime during the week. And Roy comes by here at least twice a day to check and see if there's any things to put into the shed. So he will make sure that they get uh, collected and put away for you. Um, last year, I think our total, our highest figure was $700 in bottle drive revenue. So let's see if we can beat that uh, this fall. Um, Secondly, if you came in on, and you may have noticed a very bright blue board with some envelopes that look like this on it. As Reverend Sean said, this is our fission for the future. So can you all give me a wave? Oh, good. At least you're current. Um, <laughs> they knew it was going to start. Um, Last year, based on our, the success of our uh, Tree of Beliefs campaign last year, we have, done, we have started our Fission for the Future. So you simply take an envelope. There are envelopes out there from 1 to 157. Well, there were. Some people have already taken their envelopes. For instance, I have number 38 in my hand. Um, you can take maybe envelopes to represent your age, 38. Uh, you can take envelopes to represent, tr this is honest, um, <laughs> You can take envelopes to represent the year you were born. Uh, you could take envelopes to represent a special anniversary in your life. Uh, all kinds of options. Uh, and there are envelopes that range from $1 to 157, which means even the youngest members of our congregation can participate in this uh, stewardship portion and fundraising component for our fall. Last year, we raised about $7,000. Now. I know we have some competitive people in this congregation. We've seen it happen with Hockey Challenge. 
Portland United Church ran a similar campaign to this in the spring last year, and they had an 85% return rate. Last year, our return rate was 72%. Hmm, just saying, just gonna put that out there and leave that little worm dangling for you. Okay, um, so giving is good for your soul. Let's flex some muscle and fill our nets. Thank you, Christopher. Alicia. I will say it's been a very punny summer around here. Between Christopher and our summer student, Allie, who's with us today as well, uh, we had a lot of puns as we were trying to come up with our theme. So it was very fun trying to do that, and uh, we hope you guys all enjoy the theme as well. A few announcements to share. This year marks our sixth year with our Katie Lunch program. It's hard to believe that we've been doing Katie Lunch for six years with Rosser High School. And it starts up again on Wednesday. If you haven't volunteered and would like to volunteer, please speak to Judy Gibson or to myself. We will add your name to our list. There's always weeks, especially in the winter time when people have gone away and we're looking for more hands in the kitchen. So if you're interested in helping with this very rewarding lunch program, um, see one of us and we'd be glad to let you know more about it. Today after the service, join us in the gym. We have registration tables as soon as you walk in the doors to your right for all the programs going in the fall for all ages. To the left, we have a family record sheet table. If you have not yet filled out a family record sheet and would like information, um, would like the church to have your information and would like to get more information about the church, please go to that table. And also on that table, I think there's a bit of a kissing booth with a jar that Megan's put together, Hershey Kisses. And if you guess how many are in the jar, you may win the jar of Hershey Kisses. So if you need a chocolate fix, see that table. Um, Sunday school starts next week. And um, for ages 3 to grade 12, leaders are needed, teacher training uh, will be a half hour tomorrow evening. If you're interested in teaching, it is very simple. I try to make it very easy for everyone because I know time is an issue. So the lessons are laid out to the point that you just come in, everything is set up. You take the lesson and you just read right from the lesson. So I have a teacher's training tomorrow evening, a half an hour at 6.30. And if anybody's interested, please join me tomorrow night. Monday night children's program begins again next Monday the 18th from 6.15 till 7. It's for all children ages 3 and up. Come and join me. It's always a fun time together. Youth group next Sunday evening, September 17th from 7 to 8.30. Come and join us grades 6 and up and see what we're all about. I've also begun a new ministry this year called Connect. This is a new ministry for those ages 18 to 25 or those grades 12 and up opportunity to gather once a month, do some fun activities together, but have that faith connection once we've outgrown the youth group stage. So if you know anybody interested in that um, group, please see me or send me an email and I'll add you to the list. Also after church today, there is going to be lunch and games, so join us for a little bit after church, a chance to say hello. We have name tags today, a chance to make sure that everybody gets to know each other a little more. I had made the joke and said, wouldn't it be great to switch up name tags some week and have you have to find the person that you're wearing the name tag of. <laughs> somebody thought that was fun and somebody else said that would be very stressful. <coughs> um, I had a call this week from Ross Elementary School. They've reached out to us. They know our connection with Ross a. High School. So they've reached out to us as they are looking for help with their breakfast program. They have a weekly breakfast program on Thursday mornings. They're looking for some volunteers for once a month on a Thursday from 7.45 till 8.15 a.m. It's only a half hour commitment. It's serving toast, cereal, and juice to approximately 40 students in the school. So if anybody is interested, let me know and we'll have a little list that we can uh, provide for the school and hope that some of you might be interested in this. Thank you. Thank you, Alicia. Uh, speaking of signing up, Harold would like to speak with you. <laughs> I just have to string you along. <laughs> I want to talk about ushers and greeters. 
and the process that we've been going through for the last couple of years to make up by uh, our schedule, it's been a bit of an exercise of throwing darts at the wall and, and missing. So we're going to try a new way, which is really the old way, and we've provided uh, actually two sign-up sheets. Don't be confused by that just because I might be. But uh, we want your names, but we also would like you to pick out a Sunday or the Sundays that you know you're going to be available and mark it in ahead of time. And when we get all that data, uh, we'll make up a, a schedule and send it out to you so that you don't forget that you signed up for next Sunday or whatever. So I'll be standing by the uh, sign-up sheet that I really want you to sign up with, and you're not going to be able to miss me, not with this shirt on. <laughs> so uh, when I say we about making up the schedule and send it out to you, I really mean Chris. <laughs> Thank you, Harold. Um, other announcements. Um, for those of you who are around during the summer, uh, we were doing a summer supper series of services this summer that proved to be very popular. It was a more contemporary service. You came around 5.30 and we served you supper along with your worship. And uh, as I said, many people seem to really enjoy it, so we're going to continue that on into the fall. Our first uh, summer supper service, I guess it won't be summer, um, our St. David's supper service will be held on uh, September the 21st. That's a Thursday. It'll be at 5.30. And I believe the menu is going to be chili and soup and rolls. So if you're looking for something a little different in the way of worship, or that's just a more convenient time for you to come out and worship with us, because we know you all keep very busy schedules, please feel free to come on out, join us for a meal, and partake in some worship together on the 21st. Now for our final announcement, I think it's final, John. Well, good morning, everyone. I didn't expect all those announcements and, well, here it is, here's the deal. Mark your calendar, October 21st. It's called Game Changer. I can tell you right now, we have approximately 16 items already in-house for our event. Um, it's part of the stewardship. And the goal was to raise $6,000. And I'm already pleased to say we're already two thirds of the way there. And we haven't even started yet. You know why I took this puppy on? Mike Doyle, stand up please. <laughs> he challenged the stewardship committee. If we raise six thousand dollars and we're already two or one third of the way there, he's going to dance here in the church for us all. <laughs> he didn't know this was coming, did you, Mike? But I do need your help. So here's the deal: the tickets are going to be for October twenty-first. It's a Saturday night. It's going to be at Rossi High School. And the stewardship committee come up with a great name, Game Changer. What does that mean? Well, you're going to have to come to church a few more Sundays and I'll fill you in. But here's how we're going to start. Two things, two requests today. The tickets for the event are going to be 20, um, $15 an individual, $25 a couple. That's what the tickets will be to attend the event. I did the math and all this with the stewardship committee, and here's the deal. If we get 50 people from the church attending, and if we all bring someone with us, well, I've already got uh, three to four other couples joining myself because it's a fun night. It's going to be great because we have line entertainment. Now, Ron shared something with me. The name of his group is the four of us, but yet there's five in the band. Figure that out. Um, so these are just some of the cat out of the bag. $15 a ticket, 25 for two. So now here's how you can help. Some of the items we have for the evening, it's an auction, it's a casino, it's a fun evening, play money, not real money. And you know, game changer is appropriate. Some of the things we've already got in house, we got a box suite at the Harbor Station, we got nights at the Delta, Chipman Hill, we got gift cards for uh, very good restaurants throughout the city. Now I'm gonna cut it short here because they didn't leave me enough time to tell you. So I'll have to do this again. 
but here's how you can help. Well, let's just say that maybe you have a cottage or something that you could bring forward and present as an auction item. We've already done our math through the, uh, you know, making sure we keep TRA and Mike and everyone happy. So let's say that you have a, a cottage. Just give, I'm giving you different ideas. Let's say you have a cottage and you're able to present that as a weekend away at a cottage, your cottage. You'll get fair market value for, you know, if you can demonstrate what it would cost, for, you know, if you rent it out or whatever. It gives the people opportunities that maybe don't have a cottage or maybe even if you have somewhere a nice one week's rental down in Florida or anything like that, that would help too. We'll, we'll accept that. But the auction items we currently have have a uh, minimum value of $100 up right now currently as high as $600. We've got some great items and I can think of many of in this group, in this congregation that could perhaps help us continue this. Um, maybe you've got a specialty and I know two or three that I'm going to reach out and ask them if they could make a donation as well. October 21st, we need 50 from the church and if everyone brings two friends, we all got friends, right? That evening. We will meet our goal, and we'll surpass our goal, and we'll get to see Mr. Doyle dance. Thank you. I prefer to think of it, John, that I didn't, uh, I didn't leave you not enough time. I left the best for last. <laughs> uh, I'm going to sneak in here from the back. There's a member in the congregation that drives, I believe, a Ford. It's not going home today. Because I have your keys. If you'd like to go home, swing by and pick them up. Thank you, Adam. <laughs> well, as a community, as we gather to share our joys and concerns, we lift up prayers for ourselves, our family, our friends, this community, and the world. Are there any celebrations you'd like to share today? Are there any worries or concerns you'd like to share? Oh, congratulations. Your girlfriend got a kitten? That's fabulous. A, a kidney. Oh, that's even better. I was going to say, I was telling Byron earlier that my hearing's starting to go. Obviously it is. That is fabulous. That's fantastic news. Absolutely, for all those who are suffering uh, under the gale force winds of Hurricane Irma and who are cleaning up the aftermath of Hurricane Harvey. Absolutely. Prayers for a friend, uh, Pastor Sean Craven from Havelock Wesleyan Church in Nova Scotia. Um, Sean is fighting for his life right now, so if we could hold him in our prayers and his congregation as they are sort of in a time of turmoil in the church and great concern. So if you could hold him in your prayers, it would be greatly appreciated. That as a community, we will gather together these poignant moments of our life and faith, both those we've named and left unnamed and lift them up to you, O oh God, our hope and our creator, as we prepare ourselves for worship.
Gonna catch some fish. Gonna catch some fish. Gonna catch some fish. Gonna throw those nets. I like to have those girls who sing come and join us. To be humble, to be kind, it is the giving of the peace in your mind. To a stranger, to a friend, to give in such a way that has no end. We are love, we are one, we are how we treat each other when the day is done. We are peace, we are war, we are how we treat each other and nothing more. To be bold, to be brave, it is a thinking that the heart can still be saved, and the darkness can come quick. The danger and the anger and the hanging on to it. We are love. We are one. We are how we treat each other when the day is done. We are peace. We are war. We are how we treat each other and nothing more. And tell me what it is that you see. A world that's full of endless possibilities. And heroes, they don't look like they used to. They look like you do. We are love. We are one. We are how we treat each other when the day is done. We are peace. We are war. We are how we treat each other and nothing more. We are love. We are one. We are how we treat each other when the day is done. We are peace. We are war. We are how we treat each other and nothing more. We are how we treat each other and nothing more. Who would like to join me at the front this morning for a story? And if you brought your backpack, bring it along. Have a seat. Can I? That's okay. Your bag's almost as big as you. <laughs> and as everybody's coming up, I'd also like to say a special thanks to my Christian Life and Growth Committee for all their help uh, with preparing everything in the gym for after church. Forgot to do that during announcements. All right. Everybody find a place to sit. Oh, do you want to sit by me? Yeah. It's so nice to see so many of you this morning. It's always, this is always one of my favorite Sundays. Seeing everybody back after the summer, all gathered together in one place. And it's a chance to see everybody and connect. But I also feel that I always think of September as the beginning of the year, more so than I do in January. 
I know we celebrate New Year's in January, but I think September is the beginning of a new year. Fresh beginnings, fresh new beginnings, new daycares, new preschools, new after-school programs, new elementary, middle and high school, and we have so many students in our congregation in and college and other forms of education. It's a very exciting time. And for all of those who teach and administer and work in the schools, we always hold you in our prayers every day, especially this time of year, as all the new beginnings. So I have a blessing that we're going to join together in saying this morning. So if it says left on the screen, those sitting on the left side will follow that. If it says right, if you're sitting on the right side, you're going to follow that line. At the end, we're going to say a prayer together. So let's join together in our blessing. Crayons. <laughs> Getting up early. New teacher, new classmates, new subjects to learn. God is with us in our learning and in all that we do. Let's join together in prayer. We thank you, God, for the resources and school supplies that help our children and students of all ages learn. We thank you for children and all involved in our children's education. We ask you to bless workers with children, the children of this extended community, and persons of all ages who seek to learn and to grow. Amen. This morning, I have a tag that I'm going to give you, and I'll put the, ba the basket at the back after the service, and if anybody wants to take one. On the tag, you can put it on your backpack, or you can put it in your backpack. And it says on the front, you are chosen, you are protected, and you are strengthened. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. May your hands be blessed as you write, draw, work, and play. May you lend a helping hand. May you know you can learn and grow in so many ways. And may your heart love as you make friends and treat others with respect and care. May your health be blessed as you live, move, and play. So this is from our congregation. It's to go on your backpacks or in your backpack, and you will each get one of those this morning. I love your matching outfits. You're welcome. Go on one. And when you go back to your seats, if you, you're going to stay in church today because Sunday school is going to start next week. If you want something to do for a few minutes when you are at your seat, on the back chair by the door, there's a basket and it has activity bags. And there's something in the bag that can keep you busy for a few minutes. If you'd like one, you can go and get one. And you can go back to your seats.
As people of faith, we're fisher folk by trade, always casting our nets wherever there are people to hear your word and share your story. And we've been doing it for so long, we've a whole host of favorite tools and techniques to fish our favorite fishing grounds. But the nets are coming up a lot emptier these days, and we're ready to try something new. So as we swim back to church this fall, guide us out into unfamiliar waters and teach us to fish the other side of our boats, because there are plenty of fish to catch, and we'd like to release a few into the grace of your love and the goodness of our community. Make us again your fishers of men. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes to us from the Gospel according to John, chapter 21, verses 1 to 14. After this, Jesus revealed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he revealed himself in this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got into the boat. But that night they caught nothing. Just as day was breaking, Jesus stood on the shore. Yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, do you have any fish? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in, because the quantity of fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved, therefore, said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he was stripped for work, and threw himself into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the lands, but about a hundred yards off. When they got out on land, they saw a charcoal fire in place, with fish laid out on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, 153 of them. And although there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, and so with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus was revealed to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. Let us pray. Loving God, May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts find their source in you, the source of life and love for all of creation. Amen. Don't let your fisher friends fool you. It's all about the fish. Now I know if you ask them, they'll spin you a yarn about how good it is to be out amidst the beauty of nature, to be alone with your thoughts, and to while away an afternoon or three out on the water by a, with a couple of good fishing buddies. But I defy you to find me the fisherman who isn't interested in catching at least a few fish along the way. And if you want to catch a fish, then as I understand it, there are only two ways you can really go about it. And the first way is to be what I'd call a traditionalist. These are the guys who rely on an old familiar rod, a handful of trusty lures, 
and when they head out fishing, mate straight for a handful of secret fishing spots that they return to like salmon to their spawning grounds. And as I'm given to understand it, you can enjoy a fair bit of success using this technique. But for other fishermen, it's all about the gear. These are the guys who fervently believe that if you want to catch a fish, and remember, it's all about the fish, then you've got to have all the latest and greatest rods, reels, lures, and gadgets to find and catch those fish. And so long as it's new and you better believe that if someone somewhere is using it to catch fish, these guys are going to fall all over themselves to try it for themselves. And as I'm given to understand it, this too can be a fairly successful technique for those who can finance it. But what happens when there are no fish? Well, the traditionalist is liable to keep fishing the same waters with the same gear, as their assumption is that they're already doing everything right and that the fish will eventually return. Meanwhile, for those who like their gear, they're off to their local outdoor sporting outlet to buy every gadget recommended by their favorite fishing magazine. But neither approach is liable to net you any more fish because neither approach is really addressing the problem. If there are no fish where you're fishing, then it doesn't matter how secret your spot is or how good your technique is or how dope your gear is, you're not catching any fish. And that as we've always been fishers of a sort, would go a long way toward explaining where we're at as a church these days. Now, for us, for us, the fish we're after is to bring the good news of Jesus Christ and the benefits of living in Christian community to as many people as possible. Now, as any minister will tell you, there's a lot more to church and faith than just that, but we can't argue that this is the job that Jesus gave us to do. But what we're finding these days is that we're not catching many fish. And like the good fisher folk we are, we're all of us falling back into the same two techniques. The traditionalists in our midst are absolutely convinced that if we keep doing the same things the same way in the same places, the people will eventually come to their senses and come back to church. Meanwhile, those of us who are really into change are reading up on every new church program in North America and buying every piece of kit and implementing every program that any other church has found and used successfully, which is great if you can finance it. But like our fishermen friends, we're not having much success. Because while our churches may have the most beautiful buildings, the most beautiful music, the best equipment, the best programs, the best community, the best ministry teams in the whole of Canada, if there are not any fish where we're fishing, then like those first disciples, it doesn't matter if we fish the whole night through. We're not catching any fish. What we've got to do is start taking Jesus' advice. What we've got to do is try fishing on the other side of the boat. We've got to go where the fish are. Now, I'm not saying there are no fish to be caught around here. According to Stats Canada, in Rossley alone, there are 1,300 people who self-identify as being United Church. And most of them are under 60. So there are fish to catch. They're just not here. So where are they? Well, that's what we need to find out. But we're not going to find out by doing the same things in the same way in the same places because we've already caught those fish. They're the ones already in our net and don't need to be sold on either the good news or the benefits of living in Christian community. But running out and buying every piece of kit and implementing every program that any other church is using successfully isn't the answer either. St. David's isn't liable to run a very successful street ministry here in Rosse. And hiring a dozen ministers and gutting the sanctuary for a full-on theater setup is a little beyond our means. And I think the trustees would all quit if we tried to do that too. And says, but I think we're asking those questions right now. Those are the questions we're asking. And our church board right now is engaged in a strategic planning process that's trying to answer those questions and come up with a plan for St. David's that's going to allow us to make those connections. Our communications team is doing their best right now to increase our online presence through Facebook and Twitter and Snapchat and live streaming our worship services because let's face it, if you want to know where the fish are these days, most of them are online. We've also got an affirmation committee that's going to help us take a hard look at who we may not be welcoming, 
how we might welcome them, and exactly what it would take to be radically hospitable to everyone who passes through our doors. And that's just the beginning. We're just making our first few tentative casts into uncharted waters in search of fish we know have got to be there. And if we want to catch and release those fish into the love of God and the grace of this community, then St. David, David's needs your help to do it. We need you to go out there and connect with them. We need you to come back and tell us what it is they need. We need your dreams. We need your daring. We need you to invest your time and resources in this church if we're going to make those dreams a reality. We only get there with you. Christ only gets to them through you. And what kind of fishers of men would we be if we didn't want to go out there and catch at least a few fish? So this fall, I'm challenging you to take up fishing so that St. David's United Church can start fishing for the future. So what do you say? Can you say amen to that? If we're going to go fishing then we need to check out both sides of the boat before casting our nets. So let's fish for our future as we now take up our morning offering. Jesus gave us many things, a message to preach, a path to follow, and a promise to share. And as members of Christ's church, every day we go fishing for the next person to share his story with. But our future fishing grounds won't be found with the same old techniques. So we've got to be prepared to fish the other side of the boat with everything we've got if we're going to bring in the catch that Christ has promised. So help us, God, to think outside the box and bless this offering, whether made by plate or by par, that we might be willing to fish other seas, using novel techniques, and to cast our nets wherever the Spirit calls us. Because we are Christ's fishers of men, 
that we would not return to you empty-handed. This we pray in Jesus' name. Please be seated. As we move into our time of prayer this morning, when you came in this morning, the concern of your team need a piece of colored string. Did everybody get a piece of colored string? You didn't get one? Did anybody else not get a piece? You're missing yours, no problem. So we're tr I'm doing something a little different this morning with prayer. And this is something that should work with the number in our congregation because the day we did it, there were 700 people joining together in prayer. So as we move into our time of prayers today, we're going to keep silence during this time. So I asked you all to hold on to your string when you came in. So I'm going to give you instructions through this time as to what you're going to do. So first of all, we're going to take time, hold our string, and I want you to just spend a few moments in silence reflecting on those things that are on your mind. So a time for your own silent prayers. Just keeping in your hearts and in your minds the people who you're praying for, the places, the things and spend a few moments in silence. I now ask you, while keeping the silence and feeling God's presence amongst us, to join your prayers with the people on each side of you. So you're going to just simply tie your strings together. If there's nobody right beside you, reach to the person behind you. And the choir, I'll ask you to join yours together as well. What we should be doing at this time is connecting our church family together and all the prayers and concerns that we hold. Once we are connected... I will continue our prayer. Our hope is that these prayers will all be connected together around the church, so we will connect string to string, and I'm hoping that we're going to make a net that will then decorate our communion table so our fishing for the future theme, all our prayers, are going to be the center of our worship. So if you have your strings connected with those around you, you can reach to the pew behind you and tie in with them. Just don't tie yourselves up. <laughs> It'll be a very interesting looking net. And we will be connecting the choir to it after. We won't get you to come down now, unless you'd like to. We can connect it after. So we should be somewhat connected at this point. You tried. So if it's someone connect, somewhat connected, I'll just ask whoever's holding it to just sort of lift it in the air. And at this point in time, let us join our hearts and our minds. We're joining our hearts, minds, and pieces of string, exactly, in prayer. Creator and living God, we give thanks for an opportunity for silent prayers. For this day that brings all of us and our prayers tied together. The prayers that will be casted to form a net and encompass our communion table. 
so we are reminded of all that's in our hearts and on our minds this day. We pray for our children, our students of all ages, our teachers, our administrators, our bus drivers, and our other school staff, that they know you are with them as they begin a new school year. We ask you to comfort and heal those who are ill, those who live in the relentless demand of addictions, those who are lonely, and all those who've lost their sense of home. May they feel your presence on their journey. May you be with all those who provide them with care and help them to feel refreshed to continue their supportive role. We hold in our prayers all who are grieving. May they feel comfort through the cherished memories of their loved ones and feel that by sharing their stories, it's a sense of comfort. But may they also know they are not alone and feel you with them and feel a sense of love from family and friends who experience this difficult time with them. Creator God, we reach to you with so many prayers for the people near and far that are affected by the terrifying hurricanes. Hurricane Irma, a hurricane of unknown strength and size, we fear with them of what tomorrow and the days ahead will bring. Be with all those who are covering the news stories in the areas with the emergency staff involved in keeping everyone safe. With the medical teams that are on standby, we hold all in our prayers. We weep with those affected by other extreme weather systems. We grieve for the immeasurable losses and chaos that such storms created in the lives of all individuals, the families and communities and societies, and we seek protection for the most vulnerable. Bless all who care for your people and your creation. Gather us, God, who are scattered around the world. Great guardian, as a loving parent, comforts and protects their young from the dangers of life. All these and so many more prayers, we reach out to you today, and we cast our prayers together. Amen. So, if we're connected, I'm just going to, we'll release them so that you won't be tied together as we finish our worship. And at the end, I will collect them after. And next week when you come in, you will see them at the front of the church. So as we conclude our worship time together this morning, let us stand as able and join our voices in singing, Peter said, I'm going fishing.
As you go from this place, remember who you are and to whom you belong. For the love of God is yours to share. The peace of Christ is yours to extend. And the 